I'm working on building an industry to take gigatons of carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. Now that it's 2022, all those goals for 2030 are only about eight years away. So what that means is we're gonna need a lot of new ideas and new startup companies to uh, get started, prototype their idea and scale. And we don't have a ton of time to do it. Getting to that billion ton per year mark by 2030 means we need probably on the order of 100 new companies getting started every year and getting to that point where they actually have a prototype and something that they can really test out. Getting to that prototype stage means answering a lot of hard questions. It means where do you get your carbon dioxide from? How do you grab onto it? Uh, how do you transport it if it needs to be stored or turned into a product later? How do you sell carbon credits, whether it's direct to customers or on a marketplace? So we really need to get good at answering these, these big questions. I was talking earlier this week with John Sanchez about this, and he came up with this term called atomic problems. And so he wrote a whole article about it. I'll, I'll link there, but just a, a real quick overview of what an atomic problem means as we kind of defined it in this conversation was atomic problems are kind of the big uh, building blocks of building a carbon removal industry. Uh, these are things that are going to be need to need to be repeated a uh, hundred times, maybe a thousand times to get to that gigaton per year scale. Uh, they're hard problems. They're somewhat unique to carbon removal. Uh, and maybe they've been tried once or twice, but we know that getting to this, this big scale removal means that we're gonna have to get really, really good at it. Um, so for example, uh, if, for every biochar company you see out there, think about uh, the problem of, well, where do you get all the biomass? Where do you get the stuff, the plant stuff, to turn into biochar? Well, that's a problem that's kind of still being figured out as all these new biochar companies spin up. Same thing with, uh, with director capture. You've got all these companies that are, that are grabbing onto carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Well, wow, a, a atomic problem in carbon removal is, well, then what do you do with it? Let's say, you, let's say you just want to store it. Well, how do you transport the carbon dioxide? Where does it go? Uh, there's a bunch of companies working on how to capture the carbon dioxide, but there's far fewer that are actually figuring out, okay, how do we store underground or, or wherever gigatons of carbon dioxide? So those are examples of kind of this, this atomic problems in carbon removal. The opportunity in atomic problems is these are the things that are gonna to need to be uh, repeated and figured out over the next you know, eight years to get to gigaton scale carbon removal. That means you can uh, make it your job. You can build a consultancy around solving one of these problems. You might even be able to, to build a startup company that goes after solving one of these problems. Uh, here's some examples that came up on Airminer's Slack uh, earlier this week about kind of some, some of the atomic problems that, that I'm seeing. Uh, the first one was third party verification for XPRIZE applicants. So uh, you know, in order to get started with, uh, with the XPRIZE with the application coming up, uh, one of the requirements is you need to have your technology reviewed by a, by a third party verifier. And that sounds really intimidating. And there's, you know, where do you go to find somebody to actually uh, help you verify your technology? Uh, but you know, this, is, this isn't something that's just for the XPRIZE. Think about you know, Stripe and Shopify are gonna have these same kind of requirements. And when you think about getting to gigaton scale carbon removal, we're gonna need third party carbon removal verification.com or something, right? We're gonna need people uh, and companies that are really good at just that verification. And, and today, you know, it's been done a couple times, uh, but you know, again, that being an atomic problem is this is something we need to figure out how to solve it's somewhat unique to carbon removal. It's difficult, it's challenging, uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna need to do it 1,000, 10,000 times in order to actually get to gigaton scale carbon removal. Uh, for that specific example uh, of the XPRIZE application, I posted this on, uh, on jobs postings, job postings on Airminer Slack, uh, but it sounds like in terms of meeting the requirements, if you have a degree in uh, a science degree, an undergraduate science degree, you might be able to qualify to be the uh, third party verifier for these companies that are applying for the carbon removal X prize. Sounds like companies might pay you hundreds or thousands of dollars. Uh, and again, this is something that uh, it's not a one off just for the X prize. This is something that could become, uh, well, will need to become somebody's career, somebody's job, uh, maybe a consulting company, maybe even more. Uh, in terms of the, the need for third-party verification. Uh, another uh, private message I got on Airmire Slack was about uh, finding a particular piece of equipment 
uh, for uh, kind of testing and, and verifying uh, a new carbon removal method. I won't get too much into the details, but uh, suffice to say, uh, we need about 10,000 of these pieces of equipment. It's in a whole category of carbon removal and everybody's gonna need this thing. Uh, and so, you know, how do you, how do you surface that? How do you solve that problem? Maybe there's somebody that starts renting them out. Maybe there's somebody that makes cheaper ones or something like that. Um, again, I'm not gonna get into the details because it's a particular startup and um, they don't wanna share anything about this. So uh, <laughs> that's, uh, you know, it's, again, it's, it kind of surfaces this idea of these atomic problems and that uh, if, you can, uh, if you can observe them and, and find them and start to solve them, you actually carve out a, a business or a, a, a product or something like that uh, to, to help this whole industry get created. When I think about uh, Air Myers Launchpad, Air Myers Launchpad right now is really built around solving a couple key uh, atomic problems. Even though we, we didn't really, we didn't have that, that term until a couple of days ago, but now I think about it, uh, you know, getting your company ready to, uh, to sell carbon credits, whether it's to a marketplace or to uh, a private customer, figure out how to do your uh, techno-economic assessment, uh, you know, basically is, is your, uh, is your, is your process actually capable of kind of working economically? Do the, do the numbers kind of add up in a direction that's like, you know, it costs about as much as it, uh, as it spends or, or ideally uh, costs less than, uh, costs less uh, money than, uh, than what you make selling the, selling the output. Uh, so those are some examples of atomic problems. This is a concept I'm gonna come back to a ton uh, just because, you know, from this meta perspective of looking across the entire industry, working on how to get this industry created by 2030, there are just so many of these atomic problems that are that are appearing. Um, I, for example, I can, I can probably name 10 direct air capture companies, um, but I can name mm, on the order of zero companies that are just specialized in taking carbon dioxide from direct air capture companies and then figuring out how to store it underground. Would love to see some, uh, some air miners companies coming up to, to go after that as an atomic problem. Um, and if you have those atomic problems that I mentioned that are uh, in Launchpad in terms of figuring out who your customer is, figuring out how to sell carbon credits, doing your techno-economic assessment, getting connected to other founders that are starting companies, uh, all that stuff is really, really important. And that's, you know, you can come check out Airmire's Launchpad if you want solutions to those atomic problems. Um, there are, of course, other atomic problems that, I, you know, we don't even, even know exist yet. Uh, you should come to Airmine or Slack. Maybe you're looking for a piece of equipment. Uh, maybe you're looking to uh, you're looking for somebody to, to join your team to solve one of these other problems, uh, or maybe you're even just wondering, you know, is this an atomic problem or is this just something that needs to be figured out once and then nobody else needs to do it? Um, Airmine Slack is a good uh, open space to uh, surface that sort of stuff and, and solve those kinds of problems. Uh, so if you're not already on Airmine Slack, come come check that out. Uh, and, and lastly, if you want to help work on that atomic problem of third-party verification for new carbon removal technologies, uh, check out the XPRIZE channel on Airminer Slack, uh, and you've got a handful of startup teams there that are like, they're looking for you. So um, the, the rules are in the X, you can, anyway, check out the, check out the, um, the post on, on XPRIZE. The rules are in a PDF, so you can figure out if you can qualify to be a third-party reviewer. Um, if, you're a, if you're a thoughtful, uh, kind of diligent, uh, scientific person, I think you can probably, uh, it looks like you know, your review would be really helpful for these, for these companies. And you know, beyond the X Prize, as companies apply to Stripe and Shopify and Microsoft, as these marketplaces get built out, third-party review for carbon removal is uh, very much an atomic problem. And so everybody's gonna need to solve it. Um, so you know, if, that's, if that's of interest, uh, hit me up or uh, just you know, hop on that thread on Airminer Slack. If you want to know more about this idea of atomic problems, uh, check out the blog post uh, from John Sanchez. Uh, and again, if you're interested in solving atomic problems, Airminer Slack and uh, Launchpad are great places to do that.